Imagine an aircraft so advanced it can fly 6,000 miles, drop nuclear bombs, and vanish into thin air before the enemy even knows it's coming. Everybody's a gangster until the sky starts missing pixels. This is the B-2, a stealth bomber that costs more than its weight in gold, operates in total secrecy, and now shapes the next generation of American air power. Here are a couple facts that'll blow your mind about this platform. Each B-2 costs more than $2 billion, not including maintenance. Its stealth technology is still so classified, many of its design secrets aren't even shared with U.S. allies, and it's the blueprint for America's future bomber, the B-21 Raider. I am Mandatory Fund It, and today we're diving deep, deep into the B-2 spirit, but not as deep as it can dive into enemy territory. Its history, its payload, and how it paved the way for the next era of global strike dominance. Stick around until the end to learn how it influenced the B-21 and why the U.S. still depends on it many decades after its inception. The B-2 has been all over the media. Right? For obvious reasons. It just successfully conducted strikes against Iran. How successful is up for debate? I'm not trying to say one way or the other. Everybody's freaking out. Okay? But it was some level of a su success. I'm so, I'm so upset. I'm stuttering right now. It was some level of a success. You know, whether it was a tremendous success or a minor success, it was successful in doing what it is supposed to do, which is get in, drop bombs, and get out undetected. I want to do a video deep dive into the B2 now. And so that's what I'm going to do because I have free will and I'm an adult. After I do this, I'm going to to go eat ice cream before I eat dinner. The B-2 wasn't just designed, it was engineered in the shadows of the Cold War. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, the United States was locked in an escalating arms race with the Soviet Union. American strategists feared that the USSR's surface-to-air missile network and radar systems were becoming so advanced that even high-altitude bombers like the B-52 could soon be obsolete. In response, the U.S. Air Force issued a requirement for a stealth bomber, one that could penetrate deep into Soviet airspace undetected and deliver nuclear weapons directly to his strategic targets. I heard when they asked for this, they underlined, italicized, and bolded the word penetrate. They, they wanted deep penetration. They did. Northrop, now Northrop Grumman, won the contract. I'm pretty sure I say that name wrong every time. I'm never going to stop because it, it makes people mad. And I exist out of spite. Working under extreme secrecy, they developed what was then called the Advanced Technology Bomber. The final product would become the B-2 Spirit, first revealed to the public in 1988 and first flown in 1989. Its development did come at a cost. The initial plan was to build 132 B-2s after the Cold War ended. The order was slashed to just 21. Each of those bombers cost over $2 billion to make. The timing of the B-2's debut right as the Cold War ended meant its full potential was never aimed at its original Original enemy, but it also meant the U.S. was left with a unique tool that could dominate a very different kind of battlefield, one where precision, stealth, and global reach mattered more than brute force. The B-2's design is one of the most unique in aviation history. It has no tail, no vertical stabilizers, just a flying wing shape that minimizes radar cross-section and strikes fear into the hearts of the feeble aircraft people. The aircraft uses radar-absorbent materials, RAM, special coatings, and an airframe designed to scatter radar signals in every direction, but back towards the transmitter. It has a range of 6,000 nautical miles without refueling and over 10,000 with aerial refueling. It travels at high subsonic speed, 628 miles per hour or Mach 0.95. It has a ceiling of 50,000 feet and a crew of just two, the pilot and mission commander. It also has a tremendous payload as we, as we saw demonstrated. It's not just what it can carry, it's how it carries it as well. The B-2 has internal bays only. This keeps its payload concealed to preserve its radar profile. The weapons are inside, similar to where the file were in Derek Zoolander uh, in reference to the computer. It's designed to fly undetected through advanced air defense networks, strike with pinpoint accuracy, and exit before anyone can retaliate. The B-2 is less about brute force and more about surgical dominance. It's the scalpel in a world full of hammers. With two people and no defensive weapons, it relies on one thing, not being seen. And that alone has allowed it to fly into the most dangerous places on Earth. The video's not over, but I want to tell you about my website. We've got merchandise over at TheMandatoryFunday.com. Go check it out. The member section of my website allows you to get 20% off your order and has access to exclusive content. And finally, on the website, we've got a link for regulation compliant shirts. You can wear them under your uniform. Let's get back to the video. The B-2 can carry a wide variety of munitions for both nuclear and conventional missions. This flexibility is a key reason the platform is still active today. Here's a breakdown of what
what it typically carries. The V61 and B83 nuclear bomb strategic deterrence role is what these would be used to fill. GBU-31 JDAMs, that's a 2,000 pound GPS guided bomb. The GBU-38 JDAM, that's the 500 pound variant for lower collateral strikes. The GBU-57 MOP, massive ordnance penetrator, that's a 30,000 pound bunker buster designed to destroy hardened underground facilities. The AGM-158 JASM, I'm gonna call it the JASM because I think that's a fun name. The Joint Air to Surface Standoff Missile, these can be fired from outside enemy range, adding another stealth layer. The B-2 isn't just a stealth bomber, it's a platform that evolved with modern warfare. In the 1990s, it was all about nuclear deterrent. And now, it's a flexible global strike platform capable of neutralizing China's anti-axis defenses or taking out underground bunkers in Iran or North Korea. Owning a stealth bomber isn't easy or cheap. The B-2 is notoriously expensive to maintain. Its stealth coating requires careful upkeep and the aircraft must be housed in special climate-controlled hangars. And its estimated maintenance cost per flight hour, the highest estimate that I saw was 150,000 per hour. The lowest I saw was like 120,000 per hour. Bendy spendy. It's basically like having an aerial trophy spouse though. I mean, we all it's, it looks good, it's gonna be expensive. That's the trade-off, okay? Only 20 of these are operational today. One was lost in the 20 in the early 2000s. The B2's biggest strength is its stealth. It's also uh, its biggest logistical nightmare. Unlike conventional bombers that can be repaired on the go, the B2 is a absolute diva that needs special attention. But the U.S. keeps it flying because nothing else can do what it does yet. Q, the B-21, the Raider, America's next generation stealth bomber and the spiritual successor to the B-2. Also built by Northrop Grumman, the B-21 aims to solve many of the problems the B-2 has struggled with. What we know is that it's smaller and has a more modular design, it has lower maintenance costs, it's, it has cloud-based software upgrades, it has a dual role capability, nuclear and conventional, it has a range and payload similar to the B-2, and its first flight was in 2023. Its estimated service entry should be somewhere from the mid 2020s to the late 2020s. The B-21 takes lessons learned from the B-2 successes and failures, better radar evasion, digital integration, and potentially unmanned operation in future variants, make it more adaptable to 21st century warfare. The B-2 walked so the B-21 could fly, literally. Everything from internal weapons bay architecture to mission profile planning and the B-21 builds on what the B-2 pioneered. The future of stealth bombing is fast faster, smarter, and more efficient because of the lessons learned from this multi-billion dollar beast. Let's talk strategy. Why is the B-2 still relevant today, more than three decades after it first flew? Well, that because it answers a fundamental question in 21st century warfare. How do you hit a target that's thousands of miles away, surrounded by advanced air defenses, without anyone knowing you were there? That's not a hypothetical, it's the reality the U.S. faces in places like China's South China Sea Fortress, Iran's nuclear sites, and North Korea's underground missile facilities. And the B-2 isn't just a relic from the Cold War, it's the scalpel the Pentagon keeps sharp for exactly scenarios. In the Indo-Pacific, where China has deployed radar systems, missile batteries, and anti-axis area denial zones across the region, the B-2 gives the U.S. a credible first strike option. It can take out command and control nodes or missile launchers before they're used, without relying on aircraft carriers or regional bases that might get taken out in the opening shots of a war. In a nuclear context, the B-2 is one leg of the U.S. nuclear triad, the only one that can be recalled mid-mission. ICBMs can't be recalled, but a B-2 loaded with nuclear weapons and halfway to its target can receive an order to abort. That flexibility is crucial. It adds credibility to deterrence while preserving decision-making time during a crisis. You can send one of these things up while planning is still happening, just in case. All of our adversaries know that as well. The B-2 isn't just about destruction, it's about leverage. Its existence gives the U.S. options that no other country possesses. That's not just military power, that's geopolitical currency. And in regions where escalations can happen overnight, having an undetectable globe-spanning precision strike aircraft on call changes the calculus for every single adversary. Though the B-21 is the future, the Air Force is still investing in the B-2. In recent years, upgrades have included next-gen radar and comms to work in denied environments, new mission planning systems that can adapt faster to real-time intel, expanded weapon integration, including potential hypersonic compatibility, improved stealth coding for longer endurance and reduced maintenance. Got a slew of new stuff. But there's also a lot we're not told. Multiple sources suggest the B-2 may be capable of electronic attacks, cyber payload delivery, or even de deploying classified drones swarms as part of larger strike packages. We don't really know on the 
classified side what this thing can do, obviously. And let's not forget the psychological warfare angle. The Dorito in the sky is scary. It's the aviation scarecrow. Every time a B-2 takes off, adversaries scramble to track it, burning resources, shifting deployments, second guessing what might happen next. One minute you you think there's a flock of birds flying at you and the next minute you've got 2,000 pounds of hate and fire raining down on you. Sometimes the B-2 doesn't need to strike, it just needs to be seen. The B-2's role is expanding, not shrinking. While it was born to end the Cold War, it's being reborn to shape future conflicts. It's more than a bomber, it's an evolving platform for integrated multi-domain warfare. And that's why it's not going anywhere until the B-21 is fully operational. Maybe even, maybe even after it is. We might not ever see an end to the B-2. Who knows, okay? And if, I mean, if they are start selling them, I'd like to pull together resources with my friends to buy one. It's gonna take a lot of friends. I'm gonna have to make more than the seven friends that I have. If enough people, we could do it. That's all I have for you today on the B-2. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you very much for being here. If you liked what you saw, check out one of the other videos in, in, in my roll-up, because it's a good roll-up. It's not as good as a fruit roll-up, but it's pretty solid. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.